Well, good afternoon. Well, good afternoon. Good morning. It's actually uh, good afternoon here, early evening. And um, just wanted to say um, a little bit about what we're discussing, we're doing with the OGC. So uh, my name is Pete Trevelli and I've worked in Met Office. I joined in 1973 and I've seen quite a lot of weather in that time. So what I'd like to talk to you today is something called the EDR. So without further ado, we'll go in to see what the EDR is. So what is it? Well, it's an application programming interface. And I've been around in the industry long enough to understand the variety of data formats, standards, et cetera. And not only just data formats, but data logic and data models. And it's really difficult to integrate data together from different and disparate sources. Even within the MET community, we have lots of different ways of accessing data, each with their own API. So the EDR is an OGC candidate profile, and it's based upon the Open API specification, which defines a standard language agnostic interface for RESTful APIs. And I would say this probably underpins the, 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 the big majority now of work on APIs because they're self-describing, et cetera. We'll look at that in a moment or two. And the EDI will be com will complement, but not replace existing OGC standards. So why the EDR? Well, I've noticed with a lot, lots of really cool talks, the variety of data and people talk about data wrangling. That's not my term, that was your term. And so how about having a system or an, e an API that does away with data wrangling? Wouldn't that be cool? So the idea is to lower the um, barrier to accessing data, make it easier to write client software, make it easier to uh, implement these APIs, things like predefined query patterns, etc., and removing the complexity of metadata by having a common structure, but still allowing community-specific vocabulary there's no question if I talk to you a GRIP2, NetCDF, CRF, if I talk to you about ZAR, each will have their own interface. Some of you will have an understanding of what I'm talking about. Others will not. The majority of users don't care. They simply want to get the data into their client. So this is an initiative to make that easier for everybody. So the idea is to make it easier to integrate data. One of the successes of the web map service is that we can integrate images and mash them together very successfully. I remember 15 years ago, taking JPL data and putting it onto our local maps, it just blew everybody away. That was 15 years ago, because we had a standard abstracted away the creation of the map, but everybody understood how to look at a map. And that was one of the most successful standards ever derived. So we want to provide access to the metadata via the API and reduce data size by subsetting using some of the common um, subsetting um, patterns. So what are the issues? Well, may, most users don't really understand the data so much that they just really can't handle the, perhaps some of the terms we use, the complexity. So if I spoke to you about data on pressure levels, height levels, ICAO levels, max wind level, clear air, you would think, what is he on about? Because that's specialist knowledge. So we want to take away some of that need for specialist knowledge to make the API um, familiar, easy to describe, and best of all, to have no real knowledge or requirement to have any knowledge of how the server works. Does it really matter to you whether we had NetCDF underlying it or GRIB2 or, or anything? Does it really matter? And the answer is no. You'd like it in the format you want, but you don't really care about what format the data starts life as. So the development of the EDR is a um, collaborative effort. So Mark Burgoyne take from the Met Office taking a lead role with a number of partners, including Esri, which is why um, I want to talk about that in a moment. There are already a number of prototype implementations. Um, and we did a proof of concept project with Esri UK to see whether or not image server, which is multidimensional, could support an EDR core. And how would it translate an EDR to an image server? Well, the project was successful. That's the good news, so I can sign off now, I guess. But the, we managed to get the EDR to work well on top of image, Esri's image server. So why was this? Well, then Esri's image server um, splits the query function from the metadata query. It supports multidimensional data. It also already has a REST style API. The data is organized as a set of collections, which you will look at later, but you call it services and buckets and folders, but it works very well, maps extremely well. And the image server supports EDI query patterns such as points, polygons, time series, trajectories, etc. 
So let's look at collections and they do map one to one on the image server uh, services and folders. So a collection is a geospatial object with properties, has an identifier, which is nice and easy to understand. It has a geospatial description. It has instances. I put model runs, but what happens if I said a global sea surface temperature data set, annual sea surface temperature has instances of 2020, 2019, 2018, and so on. But the geospatial description of that object, i.e. the ocean, stays the same. It's just the instance that changes. And of course, you can support data queries. That's the whole point, area, position, time series, etc. I've got some examples, but looking at the ESRI talk so far, I thought I'd better add fish, fish species, because if you wanted to look at fish species in a water volume, at the same time as look at the temperature of that water volume, you would like to have just one API and simply choose the environment you want. So what does it look like? Well, here's a collect list of collections and they have an identifier and you can see that this is a JSON document viewed in a, a tool, simple tool. And here I've got ECMWF data in image server and it was on isobaric levels. So you can see I had four collections and we're gonna drill down into the one that I think is most interesting because it's on isobaric levels. The practice, and uh, I could improve their naming, but anyway, D's for data is dew point, geopotential height, relative humidity, and temperature at isobaric levels. So you can see that it's a parameter. It's a parameter of that geospatial uh, set of collections I showed you, and a little bit more metadata. So you can see it's well structured, labels, units, and that structure will be the same no matter what this, the um, uh, collection will be. So I've shown you a set of collections at isobaric levels, surface length. So here is going to drill down into one of those collections, which you can see is called ST underscore SPCRF. And promise, as I promised you, it's isobaric. So you can look at the time, the vertical extent, etc. And that's all the metadata you'll need to create a query. And lo and behold, this is what a query looks like. Notice it's pretty obvious. I'm going for a position. It has coordinates as a time, as a parameter, and it has a coordinate reference system and an output format. I'm using coverage JSON. That's because I like it, not because I have to. It could be any format you want. There is no blessed format. And you can see this is what it looks like in coverage JSON. Not that dissimilar from the collection metadata. Um, but the beauty of this is you can have it in any format you so desire. The work is done by the server, not by the client. And this is a tool, a common tool, a JSON coverage tool. And I just put a bit of metadata, I mean, JSON data on the right hand side. And that's what it looks like. It's a time series for Leeds, England. And if you notice my um, query was at point two west, 554 north, and the time range, etc. And we could show you lots of different kind of queries. And it's all good fun. And um, we've done a lot of work on it. And uh, so just the last slide now. So we want to create an open source project to create a proxy server, the ESRI uh, EDR translator, using the proof of concept code base, which Esri UK did for us. And I have to say, I'm extremely grateful for the work and the interest they showed us, as well as Esri supporting us at the OGC and Esri helping us all the way. And I am genuinely grateful for that. So we'll be ratifying the EDR as an OGC standard pretty soon. And then we'll start on best practice documents and examples and um, I do have a live demo which I'm not going to do simply because they would never work have an EDR just working happily with an arc image server and that ladies and gentlemen is that with one minute to spare <laughs>